Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers with Geekazine and how to record podcasts, and we're doing another Wirecast uh, how-to, this time, Wirecast 5 tutorial, part 4, create or stream your webinar. So my name is Jeffrey Powers, you can find me over at Geekazine, over at geekazine.com, or howtorecordpodcast.com, where I can uh, show you how to do a whole bunch of podcasting cool stuff and tutorials and stuff like that. Today, I'm going to show you, you know, webinars are a big thing, you know, come come see my webinar, you know, uh, sometimes they're paid webinars, sometimes they're free webinars, uh, roundtables and stuff like that. You create, uh, you create a presentation, maybe through PowerPoint, maybe through Presenter or some other program. Uh, Prezi is another one. And you want to show that in your uh, on your video there, and of course bring in yeah, some video, bring in some uh, tweets, maybe bring in you know uh, bring in another person off of Skype and do a one on one conversation with that person and show that and make the the video more interactive, because a lot of people don't like that talking head that you know I am a talking head right now, um, so they want to they want to be entertained by having more content, and that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna show you. How to set up a simple, where I'm going to do the master layers, and I've also got a couple scenes that I have set up for specific reasons. So let's go to my local desktop here. And this is how I have my desktop set up. I have Wirecast off to the right. I have a program, uh, a web uh, page program called Twijector, which is monitoring the tweets for the hashtag geek out. Now I can sit there and I can say, hey, go over and use the hashtag geek out, which is just basically a lower third. Uh, I can put that in its own master layer or I can put it on the main master layer uh, so I can bring that up every now and then. So you use that hashtag geek out and then you can be on here. The reason why I'm using Twijector is because of the fact that if somebody comes in here and says, hey, see my booty or something like that, you can uh, you can hit that. You see that how that red line right there stri uh, strike through. If if I click on that, that means that this tweet will never be seen, or anything that's sent by me will not be seen at this session. Now I don't have the pro version of Twijector, uh, which is a paid version, so I, I I can't save these settings. But every time I call up Twijector.com, T W I J E C T O R.com, I can uh, say here's the hashtag I want you to look for. And then I can sit here and monitor it. In fact, uh, right before I started, I had to take out a couple tweets because it was somebody else using the hashtag geek out, which people do and, and go from there. So so basically, I have my Wirecast here. I have my Twijector, and I'm gonna sh I'll am gonna show you how why we're setting that up here. And I've created two different scenes. Now, on my other machine, you see the presentation. This is just a basic PowerPoint presentation. I've cropped it so it does a full screen so you don't see any lines or, or anything like that. But I've created a second uh, scene out of this. And we're going I'm gonna show this to you right now. It's called the uh, it's called it's basically the exact same scene, except it's got two of my intensity and extremes or two of my video sh uh, shots behind me. This is because we're gonna bring in a, myself and uh, well, like a Skype call or something like that, um, and of course I'm just using both of my videos to portray that uh, that call back and forth. And I'm going to show you how you can use the chroma key here and go from there. So you tell everybody, okay, my webinar is at noon, and then you start up here. You start your stream, and basically you can start your stream. We we haven't talked about streaming stuff yet, but we will in the next episode. But basically. When you go to output and output settings, you can set up your stream. And then of course, when you're ready, and I'm streaming to YouTube in this case, you can hit that button and set the stream or you can record it and uh, set it up later. A lot of people record their, their presentations and then bring it into Wirecast to play it during the stream. It's very, it's very possible and, and I've done that a couple times myself. So, so now we're gonna go over to the presentation and I'm going to, uh, Full screen it. So now we just wait for people to uh, wait for the time to come. Maybe maybe you started your stream a little bit early so people can get ready to go there. So you bring it in. This is your front page, and you say, "Welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Powers." And you can bring in a video. I've I've created the uh, lower picture in picture 
for these, this presentation and say, welcome to the webinar. Uh, I hope you guys have some fun. If you have questions, use this hashtag. And then, of course, you flip over to the hashtag. Use the hashtag geekout if you have any questions, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So now let's get into your presentation and go from there. And then I'm going to hit the next button. Now, the important facts about creating a webinar for any type of online uh, situation. The first thing you need to know is, is the presentation in 4x3 or 16x9. What does that mean? That means will, uh, will we see a side box or will this, uh, will this presentation be in a square format or will it fill up the whole screen? Most presentations, if you've got the newest version of Word and you run PowerPoint and create the presentation, they'll, they'll natively just say 16x9. Older versions of PowerPoint will think 14x3. It really depends on what version of PowerPoint you create your presentation in. So 14 by 3 or 16 by 9, that's that's good to know. A quick run through and that'll actually tell you that. If you are doing a 16 by 9 presentation like this is, do you have room for your camera shot? Which means, did I, did I, did I run the text through so all of a sudden it's underneath my overlay of the video or, uh, or will you see everything that's there? Um, in this case, I did do that, and I'm going to show you how I did that in a minute here. So make room for your video or anything else that you're going to put up there while you've got presentation points, and then make sure that the text can be seen. I have this, I think I have this at 28 point, and the, the more important thing is if you bring in your, pre, let's say you're working on your presentation at home, maybe it's an older laptop. Maybe that laptop only or a desktop has only a 1048 by 768 monitor, 1040 by 768 monitor, um, and then you create that presentation. You think the fonts are all great, and then you bring it over to somebody's machine that has a high resolution setup, and then all of a sudden those pictures and stuff like that look like little ants running across the screen. So you want to make sure that your text is big enough for the presentation so you, so people can see it, and that's that's a pretty important factor when you're trying to do a webinar online. Now, drop a box. Now, this is this is a little fact that just create something that will put as a place marker for where the video is going. So right now I have my video right here. Um, and so what I did was I created a nice blue box. And as you can see inside the blue box, it says geekazine.com. So if I didn't have my video up here, like I don't have it up right now, you'll it'll just look like a logo. In fact, you can put your logo there. You don't even need to have like a blue box. Have your logo there. Just something so you, the the pr person running Wirecast knows that's where the picture in picture should be and try and line it up there. So now you've got this. I've got my video. I can talk to the public and go from there. If you've got two people on, maybe you're talking to somebody on video Skype, you can bring the video over on the other side. But you, once again, Make sure you give enough space so the text doesn't uh, over or the video doesn't overlay the text and everybody can see what's going on. All right, other screens. Here's another uh, another way you can do that. Here's what I and we're going to use the the Twitter example. What I did was I created this overlay right here. Now in this overlay, I have the picture in picture, me talking, and then the uh, trajectory. The remote desktop, I've cut it down to where it needs to be. So if somebody asks a question, I position it in a spot and I say, all right, Gigascene says it's a Sunday, geek out. And uh, and we can talk about that. So you can bring in tweets. You can bring in uh, other posts uh, using something like Twijector. Maybe set up another desktop presenter, another laptop. You bring in that image over from that other computer um, and then you run a different program that will let you highlight the tweet so uh, or, or bring up the embed post. So sometimes that, that works really well. And then you can just use that as a full screen. Uh, in doing this layer, as you can, I'm going to turn off this layer. Uh, so watch this. As you can see, that's that over the overlay, the master layer one. So that, what that means is that if... Uh, if it basically uh, you you've got this layer, you bring it back, you bring it forward, um, and as you can see, so you want to make sure that you know it's all going to line up. And sometimes when you can't see the background, you can't see that blue bounding box, it gets a little bit tough. So I basically had to turn this on, turn this off. And I didn't like the position, so I had to reposition it. I had to cut it down and stuff like that. That might take uh, just a little bit of tweaking. 
Uh, but once you get that going, it's pretty much set. And like I said, if uh, if somebody says uh, somebody's all of a sudden tweeting something that's using the hashtag that I'm using, and I don't like their tweets, I just have to uh, click it out and go from there. But that's through Twijector, and you can go from there. Of course, you can also uh, create another box like this and uh, bring it in and bring those up. So here, here's my main video, and of course, there's my there's my uh, my presentation. And then I can bring up other boxes and go from there. All right, here's another cool way to bring in for a webinar, and that's through here. Now you're saying this is one-on-one -on -one conversations using the chroma key. Now, right now it's not showing anything, but if I go over to this scene that I created, all of a sudden you see two video. Now, of course, both of them are me, but one could be me, one could be a Skype call-in, uh, and, and you could be talking to them. Uh, via the Skype, and they could they could be talking to you, bring the conversation. In fact, I, you could go back and forth. You could just go like this, go back to this scene, and say, "Hey, somebody else tweeted and asked this question," and then uh, and then go to this get this one right here. Uh, I'll take off the layer, and then talk about it back and forth. Uh, of course, I'm I'm doing two things at once. Sometimes people have two or three people running things. Um, one person, so it. it, it it can be done one person wise, but you, it always helps to have a second person that's running the controls while somebody's talking so they don't have to worry about it too much. But basically, we use the chroma key option. And, and how I did that, I'll bring it back over here, is I opened this up. I created the two video layers. And then the remote desktop. Notice the remote desktop layer is over the two video layers. And then in the remote desktop layer, I went over and I chose chroma key. Turn it off, there's the chroma key. Turn it on, there's the chroma key. So you get an idea of how that works. So when I come back here, you've got a nice little layer with three, two video talking back and forth and go from there. All right, and that basically covers, that, that covers the basics for creating a webinar on your, uh, on your Wirecast. Uh, in this case, I used two computers. There is ways to do it via one computer. There is ways to do it via multiple computers. And, uh, of course, setting up multiple camera scenes and stuff like that. You can do it all right there. But you've got a basic, and you can sit here and go, hey, if you got questions, contact me at Geekazine, geekazine at gmail.com, and then go from there. That's pretty much it, running a webinar using, uh, using Wirecast to record it, or to stream it or record it and then bring that recording in and then stream it later. So a lot of people do that uh, for online webinars. Come to my online webinar tomorrow at 5 to find out the basics of whatever, to find out your next steps to whatever, and then go from there. So my credentials, simply, like I said, geekazine, geekazine at gmail.com. If you want to set up a help out, I'm a help out uh, coach, uh, uh, mentor, whatever you want to call me, over on helpouts.google.com. You can go over there and schedule a time. And if you got a basic question, your first question is free over there. So check it all out over at helpouts.google.com. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching this uh, Wirecast 5 tutorial. We've got more coming down the way. So just uh, watch for each tutorial as we go. Until then, you guys geek out and take care. And uh, we'll see you at the next video. Take care.